Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. I'm your host Steve and today we're doing a little bit of Core i7 7800X overclocking. Just a little bit. I do realize everyone is hyped for Threadripper right now but we're still a few weeks away from able to show you any benchmarks so let's focus our attention on something we can show you. Uh, that said, I discussed the 1920X and 1950X, they're the new Threadripper parts, in yesterday's video. So if you missed that, check it out. They do look mighty impressive. In the meantime, though, I still have a few Intel Core X tests I need to get out of the way, so let's do that. All right, so three weeks ago now, I set out to see if it was possible to keep the new Intel Core i9-7900X cool at 4.7 GHz without having to delid the $1,000 chip. In the end, I found that Thermaltake specific RL360 custom loop liquid cooling kit was able to keep the 7100X in check and temps hovered around 73 degrees under load, which is acceptable. Certainly not a bad result for a 10 core CPU clocked at 4.7 gigahertz, though it did push total system consumption to an insane 375 watts under load. So yeah. Overclocked, it spat out a score of 2,521 points, which at the time I deemed quite impressive. That said though, AMD are probably a little less impressed as their 16 core 1950X produces a score in excess of 3,000 points. So that kind of puts a damper on my 7900X overclock. Anyway, a number of you have demanded I do the same and overclock the much more affordable 6 core Core i7-7800X. So that's what I've done. Recently, we saw how the 7800X compares to the 7700K in 30 games, and even overclocked, it wasn't very impressive for the most part. As disappointing as the gaming performance is, productivity is a little more inspiring. In order to stabilize the 4.7 GHz overclock on the 7800X, we required a V-core of 1.25 volts, and this led to a load temperature of 68 degrees, so just 5 degrees less than the 10-core part. Mind you, I was using slightly less voltage as well. I should also note that when stressing the FPU, the temperature spiked up towards 100 degrees and throttling was detected. Anyway, with the temperatures in check, for the most part, I moved on to run a few quick tests. First up, I ran Cinebench R15, as this has become a fairly standard benchmark for measuring CPU performance. Here, the overclock 700X produced a multi-threaded score of 1480 points with a single thread score of 191 points, and that's only about a 10% improvement over the stock result. Next up I ran Blender, and here the render was completed in 23.4 seconds, which is faster than a stock Core i7-6900K, but again only a 10% improvement over the out-of-the-box performance. Last up I checked performance using the Corona benchmark, and here the test took 144 seconds, and as you guessed it, that's a 10% improvement over the stock performance. So that's pretty disappointing uh, given we are squeezing at least 18% more frequency from the CPU. I saw no evidence of throttling in my tests apart from that one uh, FPU stress test and the VRM temps were well within acceptable limits. Most telling though was the fact that the power consumption increased by an insane 52% from 236 watts seen previously during the Cinebench R15 multi-threaded test to an eye-watering 358 watts. That's not really much better than the 375 watts the 10 core part gobbled up. Lowering the voltage further led to crashes, so the only way to uh, shed those watts, if you will, is to lower the frequency as well. Anyway, at this point it's hard to tell if the disappointing performance is down to an issue with the X299 motherboard that I use for testing or if it's just the CPU itself. Uh, in any case, I can't imagine the results are too far from the truth, and at this point I have tried two uh, different X299 motherboards, so admittedly they, or admittedly, they were both ASRock boards, so it would be good to test a board from a competing brand. Anyway, last week when I did conduct my 30 game benchmark comparing the 7700K and 7800X, both stock and overclocked, I found that on average the 7800X enjoyed just a 5% boost in performance from the overclock uh, when gaming. That said though, the 7700K saw even less of a gain, though for the most part uh, that CPU was probably being either GPU limited or there was a frame cap, so the game was limiting performance that way. In any case, it's really starting to look like overclocking your Skylake X CPU simply isn't worth the added heat and power draw. And well, that's where I'm going to end this rather short video. What? They don't all have to be benchmark marathons. See you guys.